All right, we're trying something a little bit new today. I'm gonna to be filming my entire workout. I'm gonna share with you some of the reasons why I'm doing these exercises, uh, what things I'm focused on while doing them, uh, how difficult and challenging they are, if there's something that you should do. Uh, so please enjoy, please let me know if you have any questions after watching these and uh, let's get into it. Holy shit, uh, I just finished four sets of sleds. Uh, there and back was one, so I did four of those. Sleds are an amazing exercise to do. It's one of those things that I feel like almost anyone can do. I had clients do them for athletic purposes. Uh, I had like college athletes that I've worked with that do them for um, just building athletic movement and power. Uh, I also have people in their 60s and 70s do these. So it's an exercise that's pretty much great for anyone and everyone uh, for all endeavors. And one of the best parts about the sled push is that you can recover very well from it because it's only concentric. So it means you're only contracting your muscles. You're not doing any eccentric, so lowering. Um, essentially, you can do a ton of volume with this exercise. You can add a lot more volume to your leg workouts, but it's not going to impede on your recovery. So definitely add these to your workout and give them a try. So this is actually one of my favorite calf movements. Uh, I usually hit calves about four days a week. Uh, if you didn't know already, I'm doing a four day full body split. So I'm doing full body workouts four days a week. And I tend to do four sets for every exercise four days a week. So I'm doing about 16 sets per body part. Uh, except for shoulders and arms, I'm doing five sets for four days a week because I'm really focused on growing those areas. Um, but calves are definitely an exercise uh, that I feel like a lot of people miss and skip. And it's usually because, um, I don't know why, but people have small calves and they skip in calves. So don't do that. Include calves in your program. The seated calf machine is a great one. Uh, standing calf raises, um, leg press calf raises, amazing exercises. But I don't know if you noticed, but I have my toes pointed out slightly. And also I'm going really slow and holding uh, the stretch at the bottom, holding the squeeze at the top this is going to get optimal gains for your calves. So give this a try. Let me know what you think. So when it comes to ab and core exercises, I feel like too many people are focused on doing crunches or leg lifts. And a lot of these exercises, number one, are going to be hitting a lot more of your hip flexors than your actual abdominal muscles. Um, so the form is really important when you're doing core and ab exercises. But um, one of the things I feel like a lot of people miss is like some sort of rotational exercises and also exercises that strengthen your obliques. Um, so this is a dumbbell side bend. And one of the most important things when you're doing this exercise is make sure you don't do the dumbbell directly to your side and you're pinching your rib cage against your, your, uh, your hip bone. What you want to do is you actually want to bring the dumbbell slightly back towards your butt cheek a little bit. You want to lean towards that side and when you come forward you want to crunch at an angle forward squeezing your obliques that's the best way you're going to do these i've been doing these um 10 reps uh 10 reps each side i'm doing four total sets so give it a try all right just finished up my three sets of cable fly so uh one of my more dominant body parts is my chest it's something that grows really quickly and i don't need as much volume to grow uh, so for chest, I'm only doing three sets, four days a week. So it's a total of 12 sets a week. Um, the chest fly is my fourth movement of the week. So I'm doing uh, incline bench two days a week, flat bench once a week, and then I'm doing the cable fly. Uh, just a different angle of pull, a uh, different part where like since the cables are out wide, the squeeze is more emphasized at the top of the movement. So uh, definitely one of my favorite movements though is uh, the wide cable fly like that. Um, as you can see with like all my stance and everything and how I'm squeezing. And one of the things that I do that I learned from uh, someone else online was that when you come forward, twisting your thumbs inward at the front portion of the movement, you're actually gonna get more contraction on the chest. So give that one a try. That one's super awesome when you, get, when you actually get the hang of it. So here I'm doing barbell rows. This is a more complex movement considering you have to stabilize the hips, neutralize the spine, engage the core, and everything that you have to do for this movement. It's a pretty challenging movement, to be honest. It's something I don't do too heavy usually when I do this exercise. Um, but as you can see, I'm really focused on staying nice and controlled. So uh, this technically is a penle row instead of a barbell row because I'm going to the ground every time before I lift up on the, on the bar. Jeez, I'm so out of breath. These are challenging. But... Uh, yeah, hopefully you learned something from watching me do these. So one thing about the barbell overhead press, I see too often that people are like arching their backs a bunch and have their knees like locked out. What I like to tell people is like, make sure you have like a soft knee, soft bend in the knee. Um, also, when you're doing the overhead press, make sure um, to keep your elbows slightly in front of your body. You don't want your elbows flared out super far. It's really easy to impinge your shoulder when you're doing that. So make sure you keep the elbows right in front of you. Slide bend in the knees. Keep the core engaged. Tuck the tailbone. Keep the glutes engaged. It's going to help you have a clean 
overhead press. Oh, and lastly, make sure at the very top you're locking out, pressing not just in front of you, but you're up and over behind your head. So you want your elbows to get behind, to get behind your ears at the very top of the movement. Damn, I have the gnarly solar pump. I can't even put my arm all the way up. Jesus. Lastly, we're finishing up with some arms here. So I'm doing some reverse curls right now. These are so, so good for building the brachioradialis, which is the top of the forearm, as well as the bicep. It's one of my favorite bicep exercises, honestly. I just feel like I get a crazy good pump after doing them. Um, but it's definitely something you should include in your program as well. And to finish things off here, I'm doing a barbell skull crusher, another amazing exercise. So for the triceps, you have three different heads of the tricep. And so you definitely want to include some sort of pushing down motion for the short head and also for the long head, some overhead. But I also like skull crusher and kind of this neutral plane. You get a little bit of both and uh, it's definitely going to help you grow your triceps. <laughs> Lastly, if you've stuck around, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'm going to be dropping more content like this and I make new videos every week. So if you can, like this, subscribe, and I can't wait to bring you more content. Peace out. We'll catch you in the next one.